new Browns coach Hugh Jackson on the Stephen A. Smith radio show on Mad Dog Sports Radio yesterday, Channel 82. He might receive a call from Molly from Connecticut later on this subject. Hugh was expected to meet with the Giants on Thursday, but never got on the plane and instead agreed to become the head coach of the Cleveland Browns. Stephen A., how do you feel about him passing up on the Giants interview? It doesn't bother me. I mean, <clears throat> at first glance, considering the fact that Jerry Reese is an African-American and he's the general manager for the New York Giants, I would have liked to have seen Hugh go for that interview. Uh, but at the same time, it didn't alarm me because what he was pointing out when he and I spoke and he elaborated extensively, Skip, uh, going deeper into that whole convo, uh, he highlighted the fact that he had just hit it off with Sashi and, and, and Deepa Testa, um, along with the owner, Haslam, and he just felt like it was a right fit. So why go through the process when you know in your heart of hearts that that is where you really, really want it to be? And so when we look at it from that perspective, particularly when we take into account the Rooney Rule, well, the Rooney Rule is not something to just be exercised by teams. It's also something that if we really want the rule to be what we want it to be, we want it to be two parts. A, we want the, the interviews to actually be very, very legitimate as opposed to just walking through the motions to satisfy stipulations invoked by the Rooney Rule. But on the other hand, you also want those coaches to recognize when an interview is serious and when it's not, and more importantly, what they're most comfortable with. And if they're comfortable in a situation where they don't want to go through the process, I think that helps the Rooney Rule's existence. Because what you're saying is, well, you know what? I found something. I'm good with it. See what happens when you treat us fairly. See what happens when we have a serious interview. We could potentially kick it off and there could be something magnetic here and we can go with it. Well, I don't know whether Mike Tomlin had other interviews at the time when he was being interviewed by the Pittsburgh Steelers, but it was clear that once he spoke to them and they spoke to him, he was their guy. They wanted him and he absolutely Absolutely love the opportunity to be a member of the Pittsburgh Steelers. I don't see anything wrong with that. It's almost like, you know, <clears throat> whether, and, and don't get me wrong, Skip, I, I wouldn't take it this far because I certainly exercise my right to vote just like people exercise whatever rights that they may have as it pertains to affirmative action and other things. But in the end, what you're fighting for is fairness. Fair and equitability under the same system, applicable to everybody. That's what you're looking for. And when you don't have that, you want to fight tooth and nail for the fairness. But as long as fairness is exercised, then at the end of the day, you've gotten what you've accomplished. And that's what this comes down to. If you're for Hugh Jackson and you hit it off with Cleveland, I personally would have preferred him being in New York as well, especially an African-American coach in the New York market. But he didn't care about that as much as he cared about being in the right place with the right people. And he felt wholeheartedly that Cleveland was it. Mm. And chances are he was right because by all indications, the Giants have had their eyes on McAdoo because who have they gotten rid of other than Coughlin? Yep, I got you. Okay, interesting thoughts. <clears throat> Let me go back to what I said yesterday to you. I thought it was a coup for the Cleveland Browns to hire Hugh Jackson. And I believe that this will turn into a great move <clears throat> for Hugh Jackson. I believe he made the right move because I have so much respect for the brain power of Sashi Brown and Paul De Podesta, and Hugh has high football IQ, and I think it just clicked in the first session that they sat down, and Hugh was like, man, this is it. This feels right to me. Now, I also told you, I believe the New York Giants dragged their feet a little on Hugh Jackson. And again, I'm going to go back. As you know, I have known John Wooten, who oversees the Rooney Rule for I guess we go back about 35 years. He's taught me a lot about the National Football League. And he told me before this process started, to your point, that his premier African-American candidate, minority candidate, as he would say, he wanted in the Big Apple. He was hoping that would be the right fit. Hugh Jackson to the Giants, because th th it's, it's New York City. It, it would be great for Hugh and for the Giants. Mm -hmm. It felt like a good fit from the start. 
But the irony here is, remember, John played for the Cleveland Browns and blocked for the great Jim Brown. So John's heart is in Cleveland. So he's got no issue with that. But the concern I had, because I've heard this from John so many times, to your point, he is starved for the legitimate interviews. They fight the ongoing battle of what I would call the token interviews. What did you call them? The, the ones that you, you're just forced to, to, yep. to and, and I don't know this for a fact, but it felt like, it felt like from a distance, like the Eagles interviewing their running backs coach, Deuce Staley. I, I don't know that they really- Without question. Okay, it, did, Without did they question. really think that he was a viable candidate? No, not no, at all. I don't think so. Not at all. So it felt wrong to me. And, and we've had Coach Herm talk about this and you've been great about it. So here, was a, a, a set up, a, a legitimate interview. Jerry Reese, an African-American GM, had legitimate inter, uh, interest in Hugh Jackson coming into New York, I guess it would have been the next day, right? The next day, Thursday yeah. scheduled interview. It was about as legit as you could get, I think. Maybe I don't know, maybe I'm missing the boat here. But it, it, it gives me a little pause to see him turn down such a legitimate interview. Now again, I think he made the right choice. He also could have told Cleveland, hey, I just need to follow through with the process here for, for the good of African American possible coaches everywhere. Just, just follow through with it. Go ahead and go. Even if your heart is now with the Browns, mm -hmm. just follow yep. through with the legit interview just to put it on the map create a little more publicity for African-American coaches everywhere. Your thoughts? Well, my thoughts are this. First of all, <clears throat> I'm glad you brought up John Wooten. We've had our differences in the past, you obviously. Have. I highly respect this man. Um, he and I communicate via text on occasion. He's a good man. Uh, I respectfully disagree with him with some things. Most things, I absolutely agree with him. In this case, it's in the middle. I don't necessarily disagree with him. But I would beg for him to understand this. Hugh Jackson deciding to go to Cleveland, take into account one of the things that he articulated further on my show, Skip, was that he may end up also calling plays. He would hope that he doesn't have to if he can find the right guy. But coaching that quarterback and running that offense is so pivotal to the success of the team and the success of the most important position on the field, which is the quarterback position, that he knows he cannot get it wrong. It's what he's been doing primarily the last two years in Cincinnati. And so in order for him to give that responsibility up, it would have to be somebody who's really, really capable of getting it done. But he's also reluctant from this perspective. He, or not reluctant actually, because he understands, particularly if it's a minority, that that's the best way for them to have a shot at getting a job. Because when you work with the quarterback and you involve in calling plays and you're developing the quarterback, there's such a level of trust that comes with that from the head coach and from the hierarchy of an organization, a franchise, that the belief is now that you can really, really do the job. And what he was saying was that with minorities, it's almost necessary. With others, not so much, i.e. Joe Philbin, who was in Green Bay, was not calling plays, but somehow got the Miami Dolphins head coaching job. And so when he looked at it from that perspective, he's saying, OK, you got all of this stuff going on in New York and that may be great. I don't know what it is, but I know what it is here. And by the way, as it pertains to Wooten, and you're talking about the New York market? Yeah, Skip. But if there was ever a sport where the market per se didn't matter as much, it's the National Football League because it is king. Oh. It's so huge. Okay. It's so huge. I, I mean, unless you're for some moribund franchise that never wins and nobody pays any attention to it. By and large, more than three quarters of the NFL teams are highly relevant. No matter where you are, in the end, it comes down to your level of success just as much as anything else. I think Hugh Jackson knew that, and I think that's why he was comfortable with Cleveland being his destination. By the way, there's a, a play caller available on the market named Pep Hamilton who got fired calling Andrew Luck's plays a minority candidate. It's possible. 
It's well, I'm quite sure. Listen, I'm quite sure that, that he will consider it, but he's looking for the best man the, for the job, just like we all are. Like I said, it's about fairness. Just because you're a black coach doesn't mean you have to hire somebody black to be your coordinator. You're the head man. You get to pick who you choose, and it needs to be the best person for the job. Unfortunately, what I'm talking about as it pertains to fairness on far too many occasions is not exercised by other folks. So if Hugh Jackson or Mike Tomlin or other coaches, not to say that they will do it, but if they chose to go the route of taking care of quote unquote their own, I dare somebody to speak up and have a problem with that considering what's going on in the NFL yep. and college football. I dare somebody to have a problem with that. They better not let me find out. I hear you. Last quick point. I know John Wooten will be extremely mm. happy about this. Jim Caldwell retained as head coach in Detroit. And I know John was, was ready to pounce on that one because he believed Jim Caldwell had earned the right to have another but, shot next year with the new GM. And, and I will say to you on national television, I didn't feel that way at all until I got a text from John Wooten making a case for Jim Caldwell. When I saw that and I stepped back and I thought about it, I said, John Wooten is right about this. Yep. Jim Caldwell does deserve to stay. He did. It was an email I think you got and it was lengthy yes. and it was convincing. I got it also. Both of us got it. And, and Both when, of us got when it. I stepped back, I said, boy, he's got a case this time. He's so got I'm a case. I'm very happy so that good. the new GM, yes. He's um, got a case. You know, from New England, yep. Bob Quinn decided, okay, yep. here we go. And also, I just yep. want to mention, I find this interesting, of the six head coaching vacancies, obviously only one filled by an African-American coach, but all five have been offensive-minded, and it appears Tennessee is also going to follow suit with an offensive-minded coach as well. Up next, we all can't wait for this one. Russell is trying to make his third straight trip to the Super Bowl, and can his first. We'll move on to the NFC Championship.